Hi everyone, a few months ago I reviewed the amazing Aperture VS2 Fine HD monitor which at the time felt like an absolute king of budget field monitors but now I found something that has similar specs but is almost $100 cheaper than already very affordable VS2 Fine HD. So let's see if this monitor might be the new king of lower budget field monitors. And the monitor that I have here is the Fieldworld FW760, which has the 7 inch IPS panel with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. So this is actually even more than Full HD, but that extra resolution is used for menus and stuff like that. But in essence, it's a Full HD monitor. But before we get into the actual monitor, let's have a look at what it came with as part of the package. So inside the main box, there's obviously a monitor, user manual, HDMI bracket, hot shoe mount, two HDMI cables, and a two-part sunshade. I also received a Sony NPF type battery with a charger and also a cleaning kit as part of this package. So it's safe to say that there are enough accessories included with this monitor and more importantly, it has everything that you need to start using it right away. So next up, let's have a look at the actual monitor from the external perspective. From the back, uh, there is only a battery plate and the speaker. All the connections are actually on the side of the monitor and this include the mains power, the HDMI, AV, headphone socket, the OSD controller input and a USB input for the firmware updates. On the front we have a row of buttons for the menu controls and four shortcuts. The buttons are nice and responsive but they do have that cheaper plasticky feel and same goes for the whole shell of the monitor. It feels more like a Lilliput monitor rather than an aperture monitor but like I said it's the cheapest monitor out there that I know of with that kind of resolution so for that price I think uh, there's nothing wrong with the build quality. So let me now stick a battery in and we'll go for the menus. The initial startup takes probably around 5 seconds, which is much less than the aperture. And once it's on, you can switch it on and off very quickly. It kind of goes into that standby mode, but doesn't switch off completely. Which is uh, not a bad thing if you have tried AVS2 Fine HD. So, the first section of the menu, the AUX function has some of my favorite features, first of which is the false color. I'll switch it on and you'll see that the whole screen kind of turns into this psychedelic looking image. But this is actually a very useful exposure aid. It allows me to check the overall exposure of the whole image. I can quickly tell where my highlights are, where my shadows are, where my skin tones are and there is a scale there on the right side which shows me which color represents a particular RAE so red represents 100 so pure white this is a white table so it's fine that it's going to pure white and then all the way down we have the purple which is zero so that's pure black as you can see my monitor is black so it's in the shadows but it's not underexposed and only little sections are purple right there, which are the shadow areas. And it's fine that they go into purple, but let's say if the important parts were purple, that would mean that my image is underexposed and I could quickly adjust my exposure to brighten the section up. Same for the highlights. Obviously the monitor is not very usable in this preset, so you can set one of the shortcuts to this feature. I've got F1 set to my false color so I can quickly switch to false color to check my exposure and then go back to the normal image. Moving on to the next feature, we have the Zebras, which is another great exposure aid, but it's not as intrusive as false color so you can keep that on your image at all times to check any particular part of the 
image, any particular RAE setting, because again, you can adjust the RAE from 100 all the way to zero. So if you wanna monitor any particular part of the image, see where your highlights are blowing out or where your skin tones are, you can preset that and basically keep it on your image and it will help you charge your exposure. And again, this can be preset to your shortcuts if needed, so you can quickly switch that off if you need to. I think I have it on my F4. So I can switch that on and off very quickly. And then we have the focus assist, which can be switched between high and low, and you can also adjust the color from red to yellow, blue and white. I like the red. There's still some cameras that don't have picking and with some others you have to dig in deep into the menus to adjust the picking. With the monitor you can proceed into one of the shortcuts. I've got it on my F3 and I can access the picking and switch it off very quickly. So another great feature to have on a monitor. Moving on to the next section, which is the marker display. First feature here is the center marker. Just a little thing that makes difference for me, right there in the middle. I love having a center marker. Not every camera has that, but it is a great way to tell where the center of your frame is, because sometimes you might want to have something right in the middle of your frame and this way you can make sure that the important object is right in the middle of the frame. Next feature here is the marker type and here we have 16 by 9, 4 by 3, 235, 185. So if you are going to crop your image in post, for example, you go in for the old school 4x3 or you go in for the cinema scope 235 and you are going to crop the top and the bottom sections in post. This way you can make sure that you get all the important stuff in this section while filming. Again, something that not every camera still has and it's great to have it on such cheap monitor. Safe frame right here is a similar thing to the marker type, but it basically just zooms in into the image, goes from 96 to 85. In case you're gonna crop this in post or you want to have the title safe area right there. Not something that I really use, but can be useful for some. You can of course adjust the color of your markers if you want it to be different from picking and stuff like that. You can preset it to yellow, purple, cyan and other colors. So a lot of flexibility in that sense. And the last feature in this section is 9 grid. If I switch it on, my screen then is divided into 9 sections. And this is quite an interesting focus aid. If you know how monitors generally work, they punch in into the middle of the frame when you use the one-to-one -one pixel function. But with 9 grid, I can actually select which part of the image I want to punch into. I've got these nine boxes to select from. So for example, if my tripod is locked off, but I want to check the focus of some element that is on the edge of the frame, I can use nine grid for that. So for example, I want to see if my battery indicator is in focus. So I can switch to that and then zoom into this section and it looks okay and I can do it with any of the nine boxes 
So quite a useful feature in some particular situations where you might want to monitor a particular part of your image. Moving to the scopes, here we have the histogram, which appears right there on the bottom right corner. Another useful exposure tool to have, quite a responsive one. You can keep it there at all times, it's not that distracting. And um, again, it can help you make sure that your highlights and shadows are where they're supposed to be. The other scope that we have is the audio meter. It appears on the left side. Moving on to image settings, here we have various modes that help you achieve best image coming from various cameras like scan modes. Not something that I need to use with my particular camera. Camera mode, again, great for DSLRs like Canon DSLRs, which are a bit funny with HDMI connections. So you get a better image out of that. Flip mode, the useful one for me is the vertical one because I might want to rotate the monitor, but there is also the horizontal one and vertical and horizontal combined, just in case you need that. Freeze function basically freezes one frame. Not very useful for me, but it's there. P2P transfers the resolution from the camera to the screen. So if the resolution of the camera is less than HD, it will only fill in this uh, small part of the uh, screen right there. When I switch it on, nothing changes, so it's not very useful for me. The zoom function is the one that I mentioned already. It basically punches in into the middle of the frame and can be switched between four times, nine times and 16 times. And there is one more feature in the image settings section that is very important. And this is the anamorphic feature. It has three settings, 1.3 stretch, two times stretch and two times mag, which punches in a bit into the two times stretch image. And I must say that this feature is absolutely amazing for those of us who shoot with anamorphic lenses. Even the VS2 Fine HD doesn't have as much flexibility. It does have anamorphic setting, but there's just one. One setting that is missing here is 1.5. I'm sure it's something that could be added in a firmware upgrade very easily. But even without that setting, for anamorphic shooters on the budget, I can't think of a better solution for the money. So moving on to the color settings. Here we have all the usual adjustments like the backlight, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, color temperature, as well as three individual channels. I have not adjusted this much. As you can see, I've reduced the backlight a bit because this is a very bright monitor. And I think at 100, it's almost too bright. I've reduced the saturation a bit as well. And I've played around with colors a little but I did not spend too much time because it was actually quite good out of the box and I'm pretty happy with the image I was getting out of it. So I only adjusted it a little bit and for the money, I think the images are very pleasant coming out of this monitor. It's super sharp. Like I said, it's a very bright monitor as well. And the colors are nice and vibrant. The graduation is very good. I can clearly see where my highlights are, where my shadows are. Around that section, there's a nice graduation where I can clearly see where it rolls off into the shadows and where there is still some detail there. So for the money, definitely a very impressive image quality. But let's go back to the menus. And we are coming to the shortcuts which is something that most monitors now have but let's just quickly touch on it and here we can preset so many different functions 
depending what you will use the most. And moving on to the last section, here we have some general settings here like language, the menu transparency, how long the menu stays on, volume, mute, power, reset and software update. So overall there are quite a few different features here, quite a few different functions, quite a lot of flexibility and adjustment and I will go as far as say that this monitor actually has even more features than the VS2 Fine HD which is absolutely incredible for the money. Things are getting better, we keep getting more features, we keep getting more functions for our money and this monitor is a great example of just that. Before I wrap up this review, let's take a quick look at the pros and cons of this monitor because it's of course not perfect. For example, like I said already, the build quality is a bit on the plastic side. The buttons are fine, but the layout is a bit confusing. For example, we have two directional buttons, then the menu button, another row of directional buttons. And the way the menu is designed, navigating through the menus with this layout is quite confusing. It takes quite a bit of time to get used to it, but hopefully once you have uh, your shortcuts preset right there, you don't need to go to the menus too often. And as far as build quality goes, like I said, it's uh, one of the cheap monitors, one of the cheapest ones actually out there, uh, especially at this resolution, probably the cheapest monitor out there. So, you know, you have to expect that some things will not be as great as you would find on a more expensive monitor. So moving on to the stronger points, the price is definitely one of the strongest points. Uh, the monitor is under $200 which is absolutely amazing for what it offers. It's packed with features, many of which would only be found on high-end monitors up until very recently. And it does come with uh, quite a few accessories, so it's ready to be used. You don't need to buy anything else for this monitor to start using right away. So if you are a person who is looking for a monitor, but you are on the lowest budget and still want something decent, then I think this is definitely one of the best options out there. For anyone on the very tight budget, I can highly recommend this monitor. Is it better than the Aperture VS2 Fine HD? I don't know, maybe I'll do a comparison between these two monitors. If you want to see a comparison between these two, uh, let me know in the comments below and I might shoot a comparison because there are quite a few things that are similar in these two monitors and there are actually a few things that are different. The uh, fill world is actually better in some aspects and the aperture has strong points as well. So if you would like to see the comparison of those two, let me know as well. For now, I hope you enjoyed the review of the Field World FW760 and I will see you in one of the next videos.